Now I want to move away from motor to skills, a little higher up. So this is middle management, okay, in your corporation. People who know how to do, um, to get the, the widgets out in some way. They're not the planners and they're not the micro technicians that actually make the widget, but they are, get the uh, lines working. Um, so we have a great deal of individual differences in this region of our brains, um, that some of us are much more skillful in one way than in another. So there isn't a general, this is the key thing, there isn't a general skill capacity that you have. It's much like when we talked with the recognition cortex. You've got a garden. Some of you have a very big tomato part of your garden and a small lettuce part. Same here in expression. You're going to have varying amounts of your tissue devoted to different kinds of skills. So let me, let's play with this a little bit. And this will go to, because we're going to talk about assessment uh, uh, in the next session. So I want to prep a little bit for that. Here's an assessment of what a individual, this is one who has Williams syndrome. And um, here's the question was, what do you know about an elephant? And so he was asked to draw the elephant. And here's his drawing of the elephant. So from this, you would clearly conclude this is an individual who's retarded. I'm using the negative word. Because um, it doesn't seem like he knows much about elephants. Okay? Um, but what I want to show you is that the means of expression is critical. Because here is his verbal description. If he draws, if you say draw an elephant, he doesn't seem to know much. If you say express it verbally, Williams syndrome, here's what he says. What an elephant is, it is one of the animals. And what an elephant does, it lives in the jungle. It can also live in the zoo. And what it has, it has long gray ears, fan ears, ears that can blow in the wind. It has a long trunk that can pick up grass or pick up hay. If they're in a bad mood, it can be terrible. If the elephant gets mad, it could stomp, it could chart. Well, you can see, oh my God, this kid knows a ton about elephants. But if I asked him, draw me an elephant, that's not where his cortex is devoted, in kids with Williams, are not good at spatial uh, relation drawing, but it's a mistake to make a judgment on what he knows about elephants by saying, can you draw me an elephant? Ask him, can you tell me an elephant? You find out that he knows a lot. So we have to be very careful as educators that we don't mistake the means of expression for what kids know. All right, Many means. If we want to really know what kids know, we have to be very careful about providing enough means. Just like with a music guy, we can't assume he can't do music just because he doesn't have the physical properties. We've got to know. All right. um, uh, I think uh, I said that. Um, some individuals who have disabilities are incredibly good at some aspects of drawing and in fact can often be better than you are. And you've probably seen things like this. But we were criticized for not talking about students with autism enough, so I wanted to just do at least a little bit of this. That's an overachiever. Yeah. Okay, so here's, someone, here's someone's drawing. This is a person who has autism. Thank you. 
all the balconies, windows of the endless array of houses, and each and every column and the window arch of Rome's major sites, from the Pantheon to St. Peter's to the Colosseum. Okay, just want to make sure you got the setup. He's getting one flight over the entire city of Rome, and he's going to be asked to draw it. Not a grid map. He's going to be asked to draw Rome. Five and a half yards of paper can look scary and empty. The amazing thing, Stephen starts the drawing as we would, of the Church of St. Peter's. But he doesn't do any sketches, nor roughing out of the space of the drawing. It's as if the panorama already existed within his head, with all the proportions, all the roads, all the details. At the end of the second day, Stephen is a good halfway through his creation. I'm sorry it's not quite clear enough. It's, it's very After sharp. Three days of this drawing marathon, even Stephen Wiltshire starts to tire. He has filled in more than five yards of paper in fine pencil. He has been restlessly aligning window to window and house to house, because Stephen loves to be applauded for his art. In the left corner, he's finally reached the ruins of the poor of the manor. Stephen's sister Annette is rejoicing with him. He's made it. Obviously, he's pleased with his work. Yet our excellent question still remains. How precise is Stephen's ability to memorize? Is it really true that you could only see a single curve of the tiger from above? We started to compare the accuracy of the drawing with the real thing. Is Stephen's version a St. Peter's couple of tint on it? It's here again, right with the curve of the tiger. Stephen is frighteningly right. worried about time. You can play this on your own. And there's dozens of these kind of things. Okay, so um, I don't like the way they call him a camera. This is not a camera. He's drawing. <laughs> and uh, he's drawing better than you do by far, um, more accurately, and it's actually beautiful and all of that. Um, and it's important for us to know that when we look at students. Um, so here's an individual who has some areas where he doesn't have much in his garden, um, in the social sphere, for example, um, but where he's got um, an enormous investment and devotion to being able to draw in this way and be able to remember, and that that trade-off is what's typical of humans, that we are trading off one kind of ability for another, each of us. Um, and it's important for us to see that variability rather than just see the things he can't do. 